here are three sessions and one minor change that made me rock up to the Seville Marathon to dip under three hours for the marathon and actually run 23 minutes quicker and run two hours 37 for the marathon. I'm gonna show you exactly the sessions that I did. I'm gonna tell you the major or minor change, however which way you look at it. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can implement that in your training and your racing in order to not just dip under three hours, but to obliterate it. The first session was 500 meter intervals. And the reason it was 500 meter intervals was because that's the only flat I could find where I lived, which was either town center, which was busy with cars, or I was able to run five or six kilometers out of town, up a hill, and find a flat section on top, which was a dog leg, which was almost exactly 500 meters. And I just run back and forth. Initially, that was 10 times 500 meters, then 12, then 15 times 500 meters, 18 times 500 meters and then 20 times 500 meters and I was building volume at that pace and then the pace was getting quicker. The reason I was doing 500 meter intervals, that's all I had access to in terms of flat fast running. The second session was hill repeats. Hills became my best friend. I'd fallen in love with an uphill only race and I knew that I needed to keep in touch with that skill throughout the year. And so hills, especially when I was limited to flat, they became my best friend. I'd do short hill repeats, about 250 meters or one minute, and then longer hill runs that were between six, eight, and 12 kilometers, where I just focus on running uphill. What I didn't know at the time and I didn't appreciate is what I was also getting from that was the downhill running long periods of time and also short intervals running fast or running far downhill. And that was conditioning my quads. I didn't realize until I neglected that aspect of my game, downhill running, just how important downhill running was to a successful marathon victory. And it's conditioning your quads, not that you were gonna be running too many hills in a marathon, but if your quads are conditioned, in that final third, in that final quarter, you're not gonna have that dull ache that you sometimes feel because you're using the muscles in exactly the same way. You're gonna be able to push on and gain time in that final five, third or final quarter when everybody else who's gone out too fast is f falling away. The third session, and this is again completely playing to my environment, was long undulating hilly runs. So running both efforts up the hills and then gliding down the hills keeping pace and always having a fast finish because it was hard to climb back into the village where I was living because it was such a, at such high altitude. And what I got from those runs was, yeah, I got the endurance and I got the specific sort of being out there for two and a half, three hours, three and a half, four hours of your time. But it was the undulating nature that's burning glycogen at different rates and is making you go out there and understand that you need to be hydrated. You need to be taking gels along the way because you'll realize what it's like to bonk, to hit the wall whilst you're out there for three and four hours. Then I was finishing fast and that puts you in a really good place to run a negative split and to finish fast in the marathon. All of that stuff came accidentally because I had no access to do a specific marathon paced run on the flat, on flat tarmac. But the biggest change for me, and this can be any point in your day to day or any point in the future before your marathon or before your race goal. And that was the mindset shift. When I got to Seville Marathon, I went there with my friend Mick and we stayed in a cheap hotel the night before to keep costs down. And there was a party going on at the hotel. And so we weren't able to sleep. And at three, four o'clock in the morning, I'm checking my calculator on my phone to see what paces I knew I needed to hold 415, 416 per kilometer, but was I happy with that? And my answer to that was, I wouldn't be happy, although I've come here to run a sub three, I wouldn't be happy if I came away with a two hour 59. And it's great to ask yourself that question because it restructures or it repitches the goal as to what would you be happy with? If you don't be box ticking in running, life is too short. And my thought was, if tomorrow you go out much faster than that and it doesn't work, You've got Seville Marathon the next year, you've got Barcelona Marathon, you've got Valencia Marathon, you've got Malaga Marathon, you've got Madrid Marathon, there's so many other marathons. And what people will always ask you as a marathon runner, as somebody who has run a marathon, they will say, what's your marathon time? They will not say, what is your last 20, the average of your last 20 marathon times? They just want to know what your fastest time. So if you actually are doing it for the extrinsic reward of being able to say, you've joined the sub three group, 
go for it. Because if you fail 19 times out of 20, but you get it right on that 20th time and you hit way more than what you were aiming for for the sub three, and you reach towards your potential, that's the time that people are gonna ask you for. And whilst I was calculating there in bed, it wasn't a case of what I'd be happy to tell people of. It was, what would I be proud of tomorrow? Would I be happy to just coast to 30K, dig in a little bit and run two hours 59? Or do I think I'm capable of much more? It was very difficult for me to judge what I was capable of because all my long runs were undulating, hilly runs, and a lot of the hill repeats were ran up gradients from five, six, seven percent up to 10, 12 percent. And so the only real knowledge I had was from those 500 meter repeats. So in summary, the three sessions that had had such a big impact and allowed me to run 23 minutes faster for the marathon than I was expecting just a few hours before were the hill sprints, running uphill as fast as I could for less than a minute. Massive effect in terms of power and in terms of raw speed. I was also running fast downhill. So that was conditioning the quads. The long hill runs for eight, 10, 12 kilometers running up were having a mental strength benefit, but also endurance benefit. And again, power and speed from running uphill with the big power muscles. Coming down slow from those was again conditioning the quads. Also the undulating runs where you don't know what's coming next because you don't know the area that well were massive for my mental strength, but also conditioned the body really well and let me know exactly what I needed to do hydration wise, nutrition wise, to not hit the wall, to not bonk, and to be able to finish fast. And that finishing fast within those runs was what it was all about. And that's, that allowed me to run a negative split and be passing lots of people. I remember it so well, passing lots of people in Seville in the final quarter when everybody had gone off too fast. Really, really important. And then the 500 meter reps from 10 times 500 meters to 20 times 500 meters had given me the biomechanics to be able to be comfortable at running faster than the marathon pace that I didn't even know that I was gonna aim for, but it prepared me really well. So if you call it luck or just getting yourself as physically prepared as possible, it worked. I hope you got something from that. And if you got only one thing from it, take the mental benefit of just freeing yourself up and say, I'm in it for me. And I'm gonna go as fast as I possibly can within reason. And if I fail, if I end up stepping off the course and having to do it again, there will always be another marathon or there'll always be another race for you.